What does that curve look like, though, Richard? I mean, the free period, everybody got on. I mean, is that 10,000 you're talking about? Does that passenger curve look like this? No, it's no. It doesn't, it doesn't look <laughs> quite like that. Which, but one of the reasons we were we're trying to be conservative is because people will hold you to the numbers, and um, we knew that there would be a spike during that free period, and during the non-free period, certainly it dropped off a bit, but not so much that we're overly concerned. We're we're extremely pleased with the numbers already. All right, you've already given yeah. me the second number I was going to ask for. You're shooting by the end of the year to have eleven. By the end of the first year of service, yes, eleven thousand. Daily rides. Daily rides. Okay. Yes. All right. Among that estimate of 11,000 daily rides, we have our good friend here, the Chief Administrative Officer from CCSU. I would have, and this is, I mean, this show is shown daily on this campus, right? Wow. So, what's the impact to Central Connecticut State University, Richard? What are you expecting? What have you experienced? Well, the university overall believes it has supported this program for a while, um, including when it was having some of the checkered problems you were talking about um, publicly and um, even writing the governor on why we believe the project was important. And we really have three main reasons we've continued to see this project as being important. First of all, as a public institution located in the central of the state, center of the state, um, we know of directly of the congestion on 84 mm -hmm. and the need sure. to try and deal with that in any way to deal with that um, is something the university would support. Second, it has an op it brings ridership to where the university is located. And anybody that brings ridership to where the university is located is going to be supported by the university. Right. Um, clearly that's important. And, and finally, go ahead. What is that distance, Richard? Well, it depends, it depends where you're coming from. We're in the middle. That's right. why I like to say we're essential to your success. We're in the middle of, of what they're right doing. There. So either direction benefits the institution, okay. particularly since there are two stops that are actually on each end of the university and they come off and go around the uh, university. Okay. Now, long term, the university thinks it's important to have its own stop in its property on the other side of U right. Route 9. Um, but for right now, this is something that's good. And the final point we think is important is the university is a leader on issues dealing with sustainability issues. And clearly, anything that enhances our ability to reduce our carbon footprint, reduce the number of single individuals coming with a vehicle on the campus, is right. beneficial to what the university thinks overall we should be doing. And that goal isn't simply for the university. We think it's important for our country to mm -hmm. be heading in that sort of direction. And so for that reason, we support the busway. Okay, program. so, I mean, in, in addition to operational logistical benefits that Rich is talking about, there's also environmental, the sustainability issues that you get as well. And I, and is I, this a fair question, Randall? Within that 11,000 you're talking about, that you're targeting at the end of year run, I mean, if I were to look inside that pie, yes. it, would I see Central Connecticut State making up a certain number of that? Ultimately, yes, absolutely. What do you think and that number is? I, I don't. That I do not know okay. today. I think it's far too early to make that determination okay. since it's, it's an entirely new route. And as Dr. Basio already uh, commented on the support from the university, the university adopted a, a UPASS program, and that's a, a program in which students are able to get um, bus uh, tickets. And it's different from e how each yes. university administers it, so I'm not quite sure how they administer it theirs, but um, we have already seen students using the service quite frequently. And I would also add, as Dr. Beishu mentioned, um, we have this guideway here and we have stations and specifically it's not shown on this map but there's actually a bus that goes around CCSU all day long and connects directly to this ah. stop. So it's, so we've, I mean, I saw a uh, uh, Don State, come a reporter, as you know, recently sent a tweet out a couple of Thursdays ago showing a full bus coming back from Hartford at about 1 a.m. Yeah. So, the, so the service is being used. That's good news. It is. And the UPASS program is one of the most successful programs we've ever implemented on transportation. It is extremely successful. And a good sign of that is the amount of complaints of people I get who can't get to UPASS because it is very, the noise very, levels, yeah, the noise very levels popular a good at the yeah. university and it's able to be used here. And um, in fact, student government recently met with me that they are willing to consider putting funds in from student government to help enhance the program. Excellent. The program is very successful. That's good news. It's very good news. That's we're good excited news. about it. Okay, so let's get directly into the program itself. Okay, okay. we're halfway there. We've got about eight minutes, seven or eight minutes left. So I noticed that I went to your website. It's a yep. great website. Uh, tell us about the plan the trip component. 
So we have a plan, a trip planner, which is actually part of, uh, it's on the CT Transit website. So you can go to cttransit.com or ctfasttrack.com and get information on the system. And that's a, a program that we've had in place before. They're currently still updating it. And that's an ability that you have to go in and put where you're at and where you're going, and it'll help you plan your trip. But in addition to our trip planner, there's also a Google planner. And, all of, and Google has all of our information as well. So mm -hmm. you can also input it there or into Google, and it'll help you plan your so trip. So it, it can optimize my trip as well. Exactly. And I should also mention we also have something called Trip App, which is a, an outside company developed trip app and uh, excuse me, transit app. Mm -hmm. That's what you look for. It's a free app and all of our buses um, have GPS, uh, they're GPS enabled. And if you go to that app, and uh, it'll show you downtown New Britain Station. It'll say your bus, the 128, will be here in 15 minutes. You know, Richard, I have to ask you this question right. because when I looked at the picture of the bus, and listening to you talk about the bus, and listening, uh, reading the characteristics of the yep. program, this is uh, probably the latest and the greatest kind of bus you could get, I'm guessing, right? Yes, it is. It is the most technology. Without, short of having a fully electric bus, uh, which, are, which is still very new technology, these are the most advanced buses. What does that buses. thing cost to pop? Uh, average buses for any person, any uh, system buying a new bus is about three hundred dollars to $500,000. When you buy a bus, you literally buy a bus shell, the engine components, but every last piece, the colors, the seating, every last amenity that you have is something different. And how many different. does it hold? We have three different types of buses that run on this. So the articulated bus, which is the large 60-foot bus, holds 57 seated passengers, 119 when you include the standing component. Um, then our circulator buses, which, you, uh, uh, which we touched on mm -hmm. briefly, uh, we have buses that hold 35 or 45 passengers. Um, I want to use the service. Yep. So I get in my car and I come to the station. Right. Well, it depends where you're coming from. Some people may walk into the station. Some people may drive. It depends on where you start. Okay. From. This is a this is a driving situation. Okay. It, ample parking for me to put my car. Yeah. Well, so there is limited parking at um, most of the stations that we have because this is really built as bus rapid transit, which is more urban uh, centric. Um, in downtown New Britain, we've worked at an arrangement with uh, Sesney Parking Garage. And if you park there during the day, it's $3 all day if you have your validated ticking pass. But to get back to your question, some of the stations do have limited parking. Um, Sigourney Street, which is right in the middle of downtown Hartford, does not have any parking at all, but it's an in-city stop. Okay, we've got about five minutes left. How okay. much is the fare again? It's $1.50, and this is, it's important to note that it is interchangeable within the regular local bus route. You can transfer to the local blue buses. Can with I that. pay in advance? It's actually better that you pay in advance. That's our goal. At all of the stations, there are kiosks so that you, you can buy a ticket, and once you purchase your ticket, it's validated for two full hours. So what, well, what that also means in terms of optimizing the logistics of the situation is if you get everybody to pay in advance, I just walk on the bus. Well, that's exactly what this system is designed for. It's what we call proof of payment, and our goal is to have everyone paying before they get onto the bus, much like a subway system. When the bus gets there, all doors open and you just get on. We will have fare inspectors to verify that people are paying on a regular basis, and that'll be kind of randomized, but we're very excited about it. And that's the purpose, is when you cut down that time for boarding two minutes here and two minutes there, you make the trip time much more quickly. Uh, one of the things that interested me about the services you provide is the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. That is attractive. It's very attractive, and we've gotten lots of compliments from people. Um, in the very opening days, um, when the buses were be almost beyond capacity, which was great during those first three days, we uh, ran out of bandwidth capacity. But we've certainly we've since reorganized um, that, and the public transit uh, administrator has um, we have increased the bandwidth. Right. Is there is there anything I didn't cover? Uh, in terms of the questions that I've asked you that... Uh, well, I the... think it's really important to discuss the fact that this is not just from Hartford to New Britain. Right. This is a much more expansive system. Between Hartford and New Britain, it is a connector route. And um, we have many different what we call circulator buses that touch the guideway or use it for some portion. For instance, there's a bus that goes out to Manchester Community College, completely brand new. It uses the guideway. It goes to Yukon Health Center. Much more opportunity for people to get places that they couldn't before. The Waterbury run is a completely new run. It didn't even exist. And I have to tell you, I met a woman that used to go from Waterbury by train to New Haven and take a bus from New Haven to Hartford every day. She was 68. She said, I can't quit my job. I need my job. When we opened the system, she got 10 hours back in her life each day. Good. Each week. So.